I'm going to walk you through one of the courses that I designed and developed for the University of South Florida. This is a TV practicum course called Florida Focus that I also teach. Um, this is the homepage on the Canvas LMS with easy to access links for some of the most common uh, content that students will need. I also used Photoshop to design a banner that looks like a TV studio and embedded the Florida Focus course name inside of the uh, virtual TV monitors to make the course homepage a little bit more fun. I included relevant information for my course at the bottom, including my name and contact information. I also recorded this video for students to watch that will walk them through um, an overview of the course and teach them how to use the Canvas Learning Management System. This also helps improve instructor presence and helps students get to know who I am. Um, then I included a couple of really helpful buttons here at the bottom to help students understand how to navigate the course by starting in Module 0. Uh, we met live synchronously on Microsoft Teams for this course, and we also have a Facebook group where students can engage and interact, which helps increase the social learning component of this course, which is an undergraduate course, and um, I think the social component is really helpful to help students um, want to learn and, and engage in the course. I also included some examples of what the students will create in the course using videos from previous semesters where students um, produced, shot, edited, and wrote their own newscasts that air on Tampa's PBS station. I'm going to take you into our modules to show you how I design them. The first module, Module 0, is a getting started module. I think this is a really helpful module to help students who are transitioning to online learning who may not be as familiar with the Canvas learning management system. I have a course overview that uh, briefly explains the purpose of the course, our course objectives and learning outcomes. Since this course is an advanced TV news class, the students air their content on um, PBS, and so these are all the stations where they can air. And then I also linked to the YouTube channel that I run that includes um, previous semester shows so that the students can get an idea of what past students have done and also get some inspiration uh, for their work that they'll complete in this semester. This next page is a Meet Your Instructor page with all of my contact information. I also include links to all of my social media because this is an important part of the media industry that I'm preparing these students to enter. And so I often engage with them on social media and share job openings and, and help them network that way. Um, this is a video bio that students are encouraged to watch that help them learn more about my professional experience in TV news and why I'm teaching uh, this course. I also explain quickly how to contact me. That way they understand. I know every teacher is kind of a little bit different in their preference, but um, this helps them understand you know, how they're supposed to communicate with me moving forward. Um, I then included a page called Florida Focus Roles because in this class, students have a variety of different roles. So not every student will do the exact same thing. To help them better understand that, I um, designed this behind the scenes of a TV station in 360 degrees. <laughs> I use Storyline to design this, and it helps students um, interact with the TV studio and control room setting using a 360-degree photo um, of the actual studio that I used to teach in person before the pandemic. So students can click and drag and look at the TV studio that we have on our campus. Um, because this course was moved online um, due to the pandemic, I wanted to make this engaging and fun. And so students can look around and, and still learn things um, about the studio without physically being in it. So when they click on these hotspots, I wrote a short description of what all of the equipment is for and what the roles are. So they could be floor directors, they could be camera operators, production assistants, um, they could be anchors. So this is just a fun way for them to get some interaction and be more active in their learning, which helps as opposed to a passive list of things that they um, could read. I also created a 360 degree 
interaction inside of the control room where students can find um, similar hotspots to learn about the different positions um, in a TV news studio. Um, and this uh, was met with lots of great feedback from students who felt like they could actually kind of be immersed in this environment, even if the class was being taught online. Um, I also gave a quick overview and I like to embed lots of GIFs inside of my courses um, because the age group for these courses is an undergraduate student. Most of them are in their early 20s. And so I find that incorporating GIFs and pop culture references helps them um, think that the course is a little bit more fun and, and kind of reduces some of the anxiety that goes along with um, taking an online course. So I use references from the TV shows that were popular that semester, and then I'll switch them out depending on what shows they're watching on TV um, to hopefully make it a little bit more fun. I, of course, have my syllabus here that they can download, and um, I like to use memojis and, and different graphics that um, help students feel a little less stressed, uh, particularly around grading. Um, I also outline some of the most common assignments that I've created for this course and a quick list of just some professional guidelines, how I expect them to behave. Um, and I try to encourage them throughout the way with some of these um, positive messages in the forms of different memojis or GIFs or um, emojis. And, uh, and I, my students tend to give good feedback. They, they seem to like this a lot. Um, I incorporated um, lots of links here for students who might need any support and um, any kind of resources, especially resources that might be more helpful for them during a pandemic, like our feedable food pantry where they can get free food. Um, there's also a resource at the library where they can get free laptops. So this course was very much intended to be designed um, with uh, the digital divide in mind. And because this course is so heavily relying on technology, I did want to talk a lot about that in the course. Um, so I include links like this. And then during the synchronous sessions, I'll go over some additional resources that students can use um, because technology um, should be embraced. And it, and, but it can be really scary for people, especially if they don't have adequate access to technology. And so I made sure to really help um, them feel comfortable even before I started the course, giving them some examples of how to use different technologies that we're going to be using in the course. And all of these links here will take the students um, to all of these things that they can refer back to later. Quick computer tips is something I found is really helpful to offer students in every online course because um, I find that a lot of students coming out of high school maybe haven't been using laptops. Perhaps they've been using tablets and their phones a lot. Um, so while this is also mobile friendly, I did give them a few tips of things that aren't necessarily incredibly relevant to the course materials, but they've been really helpful for students who may need more help learning how to use their computer properly um, and how to get the most out of their computers to reduce some of that anxiety that goes along with using technology in online courses. Um, I've also embedded some um, tutorials there. This course includes a lot of media, so social media, and I've linked a lot of the accounts that I encourage students to engage in and basically giving them some professional development tips so that they understand, you know, how they should be using um, social media. And there's just a page to refer back to for our passwords. That way they always know to jump back to module zero. I also incorporated a recommended podcast page because I find students really appreciate opportunities to learn passively. So these are great podcasts that are relevant to the course material that aren't required, but that students are encouraged to listen to when they are driving or grocery shopping, maybe they're working out at the gym. It just helps them um, learn how to incorporate learning into their everyday lives. I also created a glossary of vocabulary and um, and a GIF from Schitt's Creek because this was one of the popular shows um, that were out while this course was being created. Um, a lot of these are helpful so that the students can refer back if they feel a little lost because there's a lot of vocabulary that's used in these more advanced uh, TV news courses. I created a video here to show students how to use DocuSign to get... Um, 
people to sign video and photo release forms because they conduct interviews in this class. And then I have a section here that encourages students to introduce themselves and get to know one another. I also incorporated a syllabus and a module zero quiz at the bottom. This just helps reinforce learning. Um, this can be taken as many times as they want. Um, and so they can take it over and over again. I find that encourages students to actually learn the content as opposed to imposing some of the anxiety that has been seen to be detrimental to learning outcomes. Um, so after they finish going through module zero, they'll take a syllabus and a module zero quiz, and then the course really begins. So module one um, goes over what students are writing about and why. I created this module to um, fill a gap that I identified students had as it relates to uh, content that they're reporting on. Uh, many of them came into the course and I've done several surveys and a, and a research study on, on this specific issue where students felt they were ill-equipped to write about topics such as racism, women's rights, mental health, LGBTQ plus rights, um, COVID-19, wealth inequality, arrests, courts, um, elections, the and the environment. Um, they felt more comfortable with entertainment and sports, but I included those sections as well because um, I've done lots of surveys that show that they this is the part that's really fun for them. Um, but they're a little intimidated about reporting on these harder issues because they feel like they weren't as prepared coming into the course. So this first module basically goes through um, some, some videos, some things that, um, are hopefully, um, not as stressful as, as some of them think it is because it's such an advanced course. A lot of students expressed feeling anxiety coming into the class. Um, but so I use a lot of these gifts throughout to, to show them that we're going to learn all of this together and basically explain, you know, why or why we're doing this and, um, and hopefully make students feel empowered to tell people's stories and understand their responsibility in society, um, and so that's a big part of this course because it's about journalism. And so I incorporated some infographics and some um, different things that will help them understand, you know, what we're doing even before we start learning the technical aspects of the course. Um, this shows examples of former assignments that students created. They tend to really appreciate some guidance in that area. And I incorporated some statistics with links so that they can learn more about things that perhaps they didn't feel as um, informed about coming into the course. So each of these little sections include uh, multimedia. I'm a big fan of using Mayer's multimedia principle. I think it's really helpful to use graphs and um, and infographics and videos and photos to convey information that makes it easy for them to understand. At the bottom of every module page, I have a recommended section for students who are interested in learning more because I want to reduce cognitive load. I don't want to require all of this reading and, and all of these documentaries for them, but very often students find themselves really interested and engaged and they want to learn more. So I included embeds of lots of different videos and readings and podcasts that they could um, look at if this is a topic that they're interested in, in covering for their assignments throughout the semester. I also incorporated a lot of um, graphs here. Um, each of these sections includes multimedia and of course a recommended um, section as well. And all of these relate to their stories that they're going to be producing as part of their assignments in this semester. So um, all of these have similar variety of um, multimedia content to help them learn these different topics. And this class also produces videos. So to embed videos, it helps them learn how to create videos. Um, so I'll show you the rest of this module one. They all follow that similar pattern. And then at the end, there's um, an assessment to help reinforce learning. Um, this is really just to help students learn um, to reduce the anxiety about quizzes. I made all of the quizzes in this course. Um, like set the setting to make allow them to do it and as many times as they want. Um, so that helps the students feel like they're really learning without that added anxiety. Um, in module two, I've broken them up into reporting and writing. And so um, every module has a little about section just so the students can see, you know, what we're about to do. Um, and uh, gives a little bullet point list to make it really easy for them to understand. And of course, I explained to them what will be due at the end of the week so that they can start practicing their time management. 
Um, I incorporate a lot of um, multimedia elements here as well and lots of examples for them. I find these lists are, are really helpful for students um, and uh, lots of <laughs> little gifts that they tend to really find entertaining but also memorable. Um, so the students have, have said that those kind of gifts make them uh, laugh or, or things that help um, bring some levity to the course and, and that kind of makes them remember a lot of these things. And as we move into some of the more technical aspects, I've embedded a lot of uh, photos and tutorials for them to learn how to use different technology. Um, and so all of these, uh, the students will go through. Um, and I've also used Panopto to teach them, you know, how to screen record uh, virtual interviews. Um, this next page here goes over TV news writing, which is a review that they um, tend to need from a previous semester coming into the course. Um, so I also have lots of templates for them here that they can copy and paste when they start writing their scripts. Um, and I've color coded these so that they can learn, you know, the difference between uh, different elements of the script writing process. And I've incorporated some, you know, examples of different reporter standups. These are things that students will go through asynchronously. And then synchronously, I'll um, give more examples of students. We'll look through these, what they've done in the past. And we'll also look at examples of what experts in the field have created. Um, anytime we look at uh, their assignments, I always give them examples of what other people have done. Um, and they find that this is really helpful. So they can copy and paste all of this into their own scripts. And they feel much more supported when they're learning um, about script writing in particular, if I can create templates for them. Um, so this is module two. At the end of module two, um, I have included my quizzes, which um, again, they can take as many times as they want. And I've included an assignment, uh, which is for them to conduct a quick virtual interview test so they can become more comfortable with the material and uh, more comfortable with the technology. And then they'll pitch their idea for their first project. So all of the modules here go through a very similar format. I think it helps to reduce cognitive load to have a repeating pattern in my modules. So all of them start with the about section and then these are broken up into different uh, parts of the course. So this one then moves on to teach students about how to shoot and edit video um, and some quick overviews on, uh, on copyright because that's also really important um, when we are publishing our content. Um, I've also created videos. So these are some tutorials that I've uh, shot and edited that will help students um, learn how to look better on camera. So this, these videos kind of help increase the instructor presence throughout the course, and it shows students that I'm an expert in the field. Um, and this really helps when I show them different examples, because when we're online, um, I really think it's important to increase visual examples so that they can understand. And so I'm showing them, you know, what to do, what not to do. And I did something similar here with, you know, how to record audio because the students also have equipment for this course. And then I walk them through how to use their phone and give them different examples of good and bad, what to do, what not to do. And we go over these and explain why during our synchronous courses. Um, I've also included some of these emojis to show students, you know, this is poor framing versus good framing um, and some vocabulary and, and audio tips as well. So this course has, has a lot of content in it. So I tried to break up the multimedia presentations with some articulate storyline um, engagement. So in this equipment overview that you'll see in just a second, um, the students will learn about the equipment that they're going to be using in the course. So I created this where you could just hover and click on the um, pieces of equipment and you can learn you know, what they're called and how to use them, what they're for, um, and then the next page here is kind of a fun visual checklist that I created because one of the most common problems is that students will go out on shoots and then they'll say, oh, I forgot my mic clip or I forgot my windscreen. And so um, even though I've given them lists in the past for them to check off, they express that this was actually a really helpful tool. So they just drag it into their bag and it kind of just helps them remember all of these items before they go to their shoots. Um, and the students said that this was kind of a fun way to learn. So I like using storyline in this way just to break up the course and incorporate some interactive elements. Um, so this module 
continues on in a similar way. I like to use GIFs, especially when I'm doing equipment training. Um, and students will also open this on their cell phones when they're out in the field. And they'll, they've said that that's really helpful. They can come back and look at this checklist. Um, and so I have a lot of these to kind of help teach students about um, how to shoot video and, and all of that. So there's tons more here, but I think I've done a decent job of showing you some of it. Um, this course is uh, 16 weeks and they're all um, patterned this way. Each week is, is one module. Um, and then at the end we have assessments and then um, toward um, later in the semester, I also included projects that will help them transfer the skills they're learning. Um, and that helps me see if they're really understanding the content in the course. So um, hopefully this was a good overview for you to see my uh, design and development style. Uh, thank you so much for watching. Um, I really appreciate it. And stay tuned for some more videos about the other courses that I've also developed and designed.